guys, welcome to the CCC. This is Kush Face Health here with Robert Mickelson. Just got done doing a four day uh, little workshop here at Revere Glass and uh, just here to ask you a few questions. Uh, starting it off, how many pipes have you made so far? Well, considering that I've been doing it uh, less than a year, I basically started this in March of last year uh, during a visit down in Austin to uh, Kevin Ivey and the Austin Flameworks gang. Uh, that was my first venture into this side. And since then I've probably done, it's under 20. Under 20? Maybe 14 or 15. 14 or 15 pipes. Yeah, oh, and uh, three or four, now five, six of them have been collapsed. And beyond that, they're just been all been me, you know, trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to do this. So. What so, are some of those collaborations? Who they've been with? Well, I've collaborated so far uh, with Assault. Salt and with banjo, <laughs> and uh, I worked, well, and here with Yushin, and that's those are those are the big ones big I've ones. done so far. Those are, those are some of, big ones. Yeah, I've kind of dabbled around with uh, a couple of other people, and I'm going to I have a, a, a full slate this year of collabs lined up. I, I now that I'm into it, I can't seem to get enough of it. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I'm so, pretty sure the people can't get enough of it. Either. Well, it's been very good so far. I've learned a shitload. Can I say that on the video? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I've learned a shitload. It's, yeah. It has been a hell of an education for me. I'm still learning. These guys are so talented. The skill levels are just through the roof. And uh, I, I'm just, it's been a fantastic experience. Of course, the best part is that these collaborative pipes seem to sell immediately. <laughs> that's good. So the that's good for everybody. Good too. Yeah, that's for everybody. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. I saw you out there asking questions about hand ground joints and everything, and it's crazy. It's this is the part I, I've never had yeah. any reason to learn before, so I'm, yeah. you know, I'm really interested in this stuff. What kind of things were you making before you, uh, before this? Well, my whole career I've done sculptural vessels. It's been kind of my forte. I, you know, a lot of uh, just base type vessels with grawl decorations and sculptural elements and stuff like that that I've sold through uh, galleries, um, a lot of just freestanding sculpture. I have, I've done thousands and thousands of pieces. Um, goblets, bowls, you know, that's, that's been my line just just about forever. So when did you start blowing glass? Or how long? 1974. Wow. You, you do the math. Wow. <laughs> 1974. So I heard you've made a few different uh, gun pipes. Yeah, I, I got interested in guns because I live in a, a very rural part of uh, central east Florida. It may as well be rural Alabama. I mean, it's just dirt roads and rednecks and hog, <laughs> hog hunters and horseback riding. I mean, I do some horseback riding. Uh, it's very rural and, of course, everybody owns a gun. Yeah. And I, you know, I got to know these people and they seem like people, why would they need to own a gun, right? And so I got I kind of interested in the gun uh, culture. It's like a culture. It's like a pipe culture. Right there. And uh, I found out some things that I didn't really understand about guns before, because I am definitely not a gun person. I tell people that. I, I don't own guns. I don't shoot guns. I'm not interested in any of that. However, there is a, a very interesting uh, architecture that guns have. It's a compelling it's not an accident. They're beautiful. Yeah. You know, like a building is beautiful. The, the, the design of guns is not an accident. There are some ugly ones, but for the most part, uh, things like AKs and M16s and AR15s, and those, those guns are very beautiful to look at. They have beautiful lines. Well and, made. And so, right, I, I figured that uh, if the human race, you know, has a, a natural genetic tendency towards war, well, then this is also proof that we also have a natural genetic tendency toward beauty. If we can take something that's meant to kill, like a gun, and make it beautiful, that says something equally as profound about our nature. So I got interested in guns. The first guns I did uh, were not pipes. Okay. Um, but when I got into making pipes, it was like, duh. <laughs> they make perfect pipes. <laughs> of course they do. What guns have you made in the pipes? Well, I've only done uh, four so far, but I have plans to do more. I, the first gun I did was an M16. It was not a gun. No, it was not a pipe. Then I did an AK-47, and it was a pipe. And then since then, I've also done a Thompson submachine gun and an MP5, which is also an automatic weapon. And those are both pipes. And I've got plans to do more. I have a possible commission to do an AR-15. And I've been looking around. At, you know, I look for guns that are aesthetically, they have that lethal kind of architecture. And it's, I, I think it's beautiful. 
So I've heard about a little bit of this life forms project or this life form stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, the life forms project is uh, based on the botanical models that are famous uh, in the Harvard uh, Botanical Museum, made by Rudolf and Leopold Blaschka. They made them out of glass back at the turn of the 19th century, and uh, they're all, you know, remarkably. If you've, ever, if you've never seen or heard of the glass flowers, you know. Everybody who works in hot glass should make a pilgrimage to Boston to see these things. They are amazing models. Back at the time when they were made, they didn't have, you know, plastic. They didn't, they had, if they were going to make models, they had to make them out of glass. Glass was the right material for the job. And so these guys went out and they made realistic botanical models. And I mean, they are so realistic. They look exactly like live plants. Wow. There's not even, I mean, you would be, you would mistake them for live plants. They're that good. Wow. It's amazing. Well, it so in honor amazing. of their this body of work that's been on display in this, this museum, you know, where the gas conference is going to be in 2013, we decided to put together a competition to see if contemporary glass workers could make models of similar quality, if not similar quality, at least in the spirit of the Blaschka models. And we decided to set it up as a competition and an exhibition. Now, do you have to be somebody special to get in, or is it... Uh, uh, the only requisite is that you have to be a member of the Glass Arts Society. That's the only requisite. The entry is free. It's not jury. You don't have to do anything. The only other requisite is that the model itself that you're entering actually has to be there. You can't send in a picture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what we want to do is put together this exhibition and a competition. We're going to have cash awards. And uh, it should be an interesting challenge for people. Um, I've already gotten quite a response to it. You know, it's 17 months out. You know now, so there's uh, you know, not a lot. Of, I have three people signed up for it already, but uh, there will be more. I expect that there will be hundreds of entries. This is the people who get wind of this and find out, you know, that it's free and what the hell it is. Well, I think we're, we're going to have a boatload of glass. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sounds fun. We we always uh, photograph our own glass. Do you photograph your own glass, or I do. do, do I do uh, for the most part, um, but I whenever I have a really difficult piece or a really a piece that I know is going to be like on a cover of a magazine or something. Yeah. I do have a pro that I have. Okay. I um, are there any other artists you were thinking about collabing with or you would like to collab with that you have in mind? Yeah, I got a lot. you have a lot? I got What's a long list. Uh, I, at the risk of, you know, it, it, like if I name the list and somebody who thinks they should be on the list is not on, I get mad. Somebody who's on the list who doesn't want to look at me, they might get mad. So there's a little element of risk in me actually naming names. but. I do have a list. I'm, I'm, I've managed to hook up with a number of them. I can tell you who I've already arranged uh, collabs with this year. I'm going back to see Salt again. I'm going back to see Banjo again. I'm going to go up and see Chris Carlson in August. And I'm very excited about that. Me too. Marcel called me the other day and I said, hell yes, brother. So I'm going to go see Marcel. I just found out Machine has moved to Georgia, which is just up the road. From me. And so he's in my neighborhood now. And uh, so I'm going to be hooking up with Eugene later on, we're, we're talking about trying to pick a time in the fall where we can work together. Either he'll come down to me or I'll go up to him. Uh, also on my short list, I'm sure people wouldn't, uh, you know, wouldn't uh, care if I mentioned them. I'd really like to do a collab with Buck. Oh. Uh, I'd like to take advantage of that seven foot wingspan if I possibly could. Uh, and, and plus he's a really interesting, terrific guy. And uh, who else did I talk to? Dosher, uh, I was up in, uh, Spokane last December, Dr. Dosha. I think he'd be a good one. He's, he's really fun. There's, there's a long list of others. Like I say, I've got a little folder on my uh, desktop of my MacBook that has a list of names and you know, that kind of folder. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's two more for you. Uh, what do you think about like internet streaming, what you're doing here today at internet workshop like that so people can see what you're doing? Uh, I have to say I'm really impressed with what they're doing. I, I, I know it's in its infancy and I know they had some glitches and bugs in the you know, getting it to work and everything, but um, the response of the people who watched and uh, just the very idea that people could log in, see it live, interact with us from all over the world, I think it's incredibly powerful. I think you're going to see much, much more of it. I think it's going to be very, very, very popular. I think, I think it's so going too. to be huge. I think people so that are on top of this the way uh, Revere is here, they are going to be the leaders of this uh, new technology and this new way of interacting within the community. Fantastic. I think it's fantastic too. That's great.
One more thing, uh, what, uh, what things are you envisioning on your next project or projects, if you don't mind? Uh, I don't really have a yeah. concrete plan. I don't. Cool. I, these, uh, especially collaborations, tend to be very spontaneous. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I learned that when I worked and worked with Banjo. Uh, Banjo and I sent emails back and forth, and I would send him like bounce ideas off the road, and he'd go, yeah, yeah, see what you get here. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, what's the matter? Aren't you into this? And you know, when I got there, he goes, we really need to just be in the same place at the same time and then see what happens. And he was right, and that's exactly how it goes. So now, I just try not to overthink it. One of my plans, plan not to have it. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for talking right. to me, Robert. Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys, for the CCC, this is Kush Face Toe. Peace.